Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the third lecture of chapter four. And in this lecture, I'm going to discuss the notion of an inertial coordinate system and why it's important. All right, inertial coordinate system. So here's the idea. Suppose you have two observers, O and O prime. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you have two different coordinate systems. An observer observes things relative to his or her coordinate system, O, and that coordinate system will be x, y, z, defined by the unit vectors i, j, k. And O prime will have his or her own coordinate system, x prime, y prime, z prime, defined by the unit vectors i prime, j prime, k prime. Now, in each coordinate system, each observer views a particle, the same particle moving around in space. They just have their own coordinate system for describing the motion of that particle. And they want to ask the question, what force is acting on that particle that would make it move in this way? And the question that arises, is that force going to depend on the motion of each observer's coordinate system? Okay, so setting up that problem, it's easiest to do this with a figure. So here's the point P moving around in space. And then we have observer O with his, his or her own coordinate system, I, J, K, defining the coordinate directions X, Y, Z. And observer O prime with his or her coordinate system, I prime, J prime, K prime, and coordinates X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Now, observer O in their coordinate system, they denote the motion of the particle P with the position vector lowercase r. And similarly, in the coordinate system of O prime, the motion of the point P is denoted by R prime in that coordinate system. And using a little bit of vector addition, we see that the location of O prime with respect to O is R minus R prime, which we call uppercase vector R. And you can easily check this. All right, now, observer O observes the point P moving, so there must be a force acting on it, and it's M second derivative of r with respect to t. And similarly, O prime observes the particle moving, and they can compute the force F prime by the same procedure m, second derivative of r prime with the respect to t twice. So the difference in the forces we can easily compute here. Remember, r minus r prime is m times the second derivative of the vector that locates one coordinate system with respect to the other. Now this is going to be 0 if and only if the second derivative of r with respect to t twice is 0, or the r dt is constant. So the interpretation is each observer observes the same force acting on the particle if and only if their coordinate systems are moving with constant velocity with respect to each other. Constant velocity means direction and magnitude. So 
coordinate systems moving at constant velocity relative to each other, those are called inertial coordinate systems. And these are the coordinate systems in which Newton's laws are valid. Okay, that's the end of chapter four. And in the final lecture, I'll talk about the problems at the end of this chapter. So bye for now.